All right. Ouch. Yeah. Good afternoon. Oh. Vamos lá. Dá uma onco. Dá uma. All right, down. Vai abavando. Good afternoon to all of you present. And um, is my audio okay? My the sound is it okay? Mister Igbe Okosun. Good afternoon. Is the sound okay? It's like the the audio. Is it okay? <clears throat> okay, it's okay. Thank you, Mr. Osaze Frederick. A bang bear. Appreciative of um, uh, your kind response to my question. So, uh, it's a long time to talk now, brother. Obama do Victor. Uh, so, so so sorry. I was just uh, I, I had I had I had this intention of doing a live video today. However, my job and all that, I'm supposed to be an online. I've been online since about an hour ago. So, but uh, 
I got very busy so I just got to the office now so as soon as I, I got to the office I had to get water I had to get so so that's what happened uh, Mr. Obamedo Victor I'm, I'm very very appreciative thank you very much we are most grateful for your kind words Wesley what's it um i'm going to talk about two very foundational things um two very very foundational things i love i love uh, putting things in right perspective um i want to try and revisit um the historical ties between the benin and the asian people it's most important because um <clears throat> at a time where our unity is most paramount uh, the the enemies within the enemies within us wants to fortally divide us so I am not that kind of a person that can be carried away with uh, a lot of non important issues very trivial issues so we have to revisit we have to revisit the relationship between the Asians and the Benin uh, I have sworn to uphold the history of my land not at the detriment of the history of other people so what I do best is I try to educate our people with the knowledge that I have. So whatever I say on or offline is to the best of my knowledge. So it doesn't necessarily mean that it is the most authentic knowledge. I've had a course where some people had to query that sometimes i sound as if i'm the only knowledgeable person so i try to let them know no no that's not how i sound so when i, I try when it comes to <clears throat> historical issues like this i try to use i personalize it like i zodua said so so that you can hold it against me tomorrow as my knowledge not that it is the only knowledge out there so <clears throat> When I try to explain the historical connection between, I'm about to explain the historical connection between the Asians and the Benins, that is based on what I know. Possibly, it is not correct. Possibly, it might not be the truth. Uh, both those details would have been uh, taken out from books that I have read. So many my So let me drink water. Then after which, after which I'm just going to quickly run through the territories of Great Benin and in Nigeria perspective. So that means whether Great Benin got to Benin Republic, Togo, or Ghana, or Guinea, I'm not going to talk about all that because I'm just going to talk about the Great Benin territories within in Nigeria contest using discrediting some fallacies being propagated by our neighbors most especially the Igbos and the Yorubas so um, someone called me and said that what is the fate of Nigeria 
what is the fate of the Benin people when Nigeria eventually breaks? Why can't we maintain just a Doan Delta? I've had a whole lot of that argument. I've also been called to say that Pedro Obasek is doing an amazing job. Someone I look up to. But we've not really, I've not really met him in person for us to talk about some of these critical issues. Uh, and then I will also say why I do not subscribe to the word Bendel. Why I don't think the fate of our country, the faith of our country that will be born, I'm not saying Nigeria now, cannot be restricted to Eduan Delta. We are much, much more larger than that. And so, and I will explain <coughs> why I, I, I believe Pedro Obaseki's ideology is a political ideology. Why my ideas or ideology, it's an historical ideology. So it is not what was created August 9, 1963 through the plebiscite or through referendum that more that would have been maintained or that I think should be maintained because that was just a political creation from the existence of Nigeria when Nigeria was already in existence. So but we have had connections with quite a whole lot of other ethnic nationalities within the context of South South, South East and South West. Even in North Central. Uh, which I will unveil some of those um, ethnic groups. Most times I try not to talk about the relationship of Edo and Esan because of Benin and Esan, because of the sensitivity that surrounds it. I will be as very truthful and careful as possible when I try to explain the relationship. Um, I believe that the war that we are looking for, the victory that we hope to get someday in the future, lies in our diplomatic approach. And that is what I must continually educate our brothers about. Uh, I must continually educate our brothers about. Uh, it is that diplomatic approach that we must um, employ in the realization of the future of what we are anticipating for a nation that will be reborn. I continually use the word that a nation that will be reborn because we were once a nation. Uh, my brother, the owner of this page, shared some African maps, some 100, 200 years old century maps where you could see that uh, Benin was ascribed as a West African state, a sovereign nation, a sovereign, sovereign nation. So when we have tasted a country freedom, independence, sovereignty for hundreds of years and for whatever instances that happened that made us now become subjected to the sovereignty of, of another nation uh, and the, they are now push for the division of this country because it's not working. Um, we must now advocate for a nation that will be reborn because there was a nation that was born first where our sovereignty was lost and now there will be a push for the revival of our sovereignty. But however, before we start going to make some of these push to actualize the nation that will be reborn, we must 
fundamentally address critical issues that has separated us. For example, the Eurobas. The Eurobas. For example, the Eurobas. Now, the Eurobas at one point in history were a heterogeneous. They were different people. From the very beginning, they were different people. It was, you had, it was the origin history of Ilife people is different from the origin history of Ekiti. The origin history of Ekiti different from the origin history of Ijebu. The origin history of Ijebu different from the origin history of Ilaje. And all that. So that means the people now called Yoruba at one point in history were not one people. They were not all ancestrally connected. But they had a truce. And their leaders were smart enough to find a way of uniting these different people to become one. They had no ancestral connection whatsoever. But they were able to find a way to unite these people. And that is the rest is history, and that is why they are more important than us in Nigeria. Who claim to be ancestrally connected? Sometimes we blame the Yorubas for being very cunning. But in truth, in real sense, they are smart. Because every single um, um, one of the very key factors, coming from a science background, one of the very, very key factors for evolution, for those who the um, for those who had for those for those for those who have for those who have inclination for those who have inclination towards um sorry for those who have inclination to James Smith I don't even know what to tell you. I don't even know what to tell you. It is is it it is true that oh you wanted to say right is it true that your Oba is selling land? First of all, Oba do not sell land. You don't sell land that you own. Oba does not sell the land that belongs to him in the first place. So you have to correct yourself. I know you, you most likely will be an evil person where you don't have leadership. So, and that's a very foundational problem that is still affecting your kinds. We the Benins will have leaders. So for your information, Oba Benin owns the land. So he cannot sell what he owns. Whatever he wants to use his land for, let him use his land for. So that is not even a big deal. Mm. Yes, I agree with you. Greatest Prince Glory. Language. Language is one of the most potent instrument for unity of the people and that is what we must now critically look into and that's why it is very very fundamental we look at the problem that affects the Benins and the Asians if we are able to cross that puzzle we might be able to have the language issue resolved um, yeah how are the Benins related with the Asian people uh, we are very, very much related. We share the same bloodlines, and the Asians are very, very integral in the making of the old Benin Empire. Very, very integral. Uh, sometimes um, we, it is I, I frown at Benin people who takes advantage of an ancestral respect the Asians have for the Benins. I hate, I dislike those Benin people. I also dislike those Asian people who wishes to change 
the ancestral respect their forefathers had for the Benin people. I'm not going to mention some names of some dukes who, in recent times, in Eastern land, they are trying to do full things. First, they are trying to say that uh, we must change that culture that says that where a Benin man is, an Eastern man cannot break color. No matter how small he is, he must touch the color and all that, blah, 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 blah. They are trying to change that culture. And I also frown. And half for the Benins. We want to now make it feel that the Asans are Benin children. The Asans, in truth, are not Benin children. Jim Smith, uh, there are a few foundational things you must know. Let me advise you. When you come to other people's pages, you must respect them. If you don't want to respect them, but you must do yourself a favor by showing decorum. I know respect does not flow in the blood of the Igbo people, and hence they are very disrespectful, very arrogant wherever they send themselves. But I must warn you, if you try to come to this page and be disrespectful, I'm going to block you straight. And so I don't have time for low-life punks who doesn't who doesn't know how to respect other people's opinion? I'm sure that there, there are a whole lot of Biafra pages. I don't go there to insult anybody. I just allow them misguide themselves with whatever ideas they have. For a, for a truth, if nobody owns any land in Igbo land, that's your culture. The major reason that my culture is respected than Igbo culture is because we have respect. We are not insolent like you people. We have respect for others. And my culture simply states that the Oba of Bini is the owner, the custodian. Oba uh, Nyaidu. I heard you guys used to beat your aces and disrespect. Anyway, your aces cannot be respected because when you, when, when to every four houses there's an aze, there's a king in your land. So you guys are born to disrespect your kings because you can. Sorry. The network, something just happened on the network. I'm so sorry. Yeah, sorry, the net, we're back, we're back online. It's network just almost stripped off. I just pray the network don't mess today up. Anyway, let me not be distracted like, uh, um, let me not be distracted. Let's talk about Essence and Benin's. Like I've said, there's an ancestral law that states, agreed by the ancestors of the Essence, agreed by the ancestors of the Benin's, that the Asians show respect to the Benin people through several um, several practices. One of which is the breaking of the cola. All right. It is also in return that we, the Benins, must not use that sign of respect that Asians has for Benin. 
to make them feel subservient to us. It's just respect. It's just it's just respect. No, the network is okay now. The network is okay now. Uh, I yeah, the network is okay. I, I think nothing is wrong. Nothing is wrong with the network now. Okay. Sorry. The network is okay now. You can check if the network is good now. Where is that? How you do? File your water. Make a copy inside. Right. Make a copy. Is the network okay now? So, like I've said, we must find a way for the unity of these ancestrally connected people. Not To make it seem that one ethnic group, all that go by now. Just by you get twenty naira. I don't know whether I get change again. I get fifty five. Uh, just by filter. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. So the point is, the point is, what I'm trying to drive out. I have listened to the very two sides of the quarrel the Benin have with the Asans and the quarrels the Asans have with the Benin. I think it's about respect, not an ancestral issue. It's more of like a respect. The Asans want to revolt because they feel that we. The Beninese think that they are subservient to them. Now, if, for example, assuming in one of the works of the the most <clears throat> popular Asian historian, C. G. Okoje, that's Christopher Okoje, daughter Christopher Okoje, C. G. Okoje, in one of in his works, the Asian native laws and customs. Uh, um, um, pointed out how Isans left Benin. Now, my fundamental argument about that fact is this. My name is Zodua. If today I decided to leave Benin. I relocate from Benin. I make this, I make this fact so that people can understand how it can, how some of these things can make some people feel bad about it. If my, assuming my great, my great grandfather, what my great grandfather's name? So my great grandfather is Imaswen. Yeah, yeah. My great grandfather is Imaswen. If Imaswen left. Benin a hundred and fifty years ago and migrated or traveled however you want to put it to Janin for example just bust one for my second and travel to Germany for example that's where my grandfather was born in Mayan Ahoy and that's where my father was born I'm over here and that's where I was born, in Zodua. Now, will you not tell me that I am a son of Benin? Being that my recent nationality, I'm not a German by birth, but ancestrally, I am Benin. So, when I'm trying to interact with my Benin brothers, they are not telling me that I am 
I am their children. I'm their child. Let me put it that way. <laughs> it's I'm not I'm not um, I'm not a lower class specimen. I'm trying to use a better word to use it so that we people we can understand it. I'm not a lower class specimen or citizen of Benin. I am a Benin man. So the point is this. If it is true that some majority of Asians migrated from Benin to become who they are, that makes them Benin. By that virtue, they cannot be subservient to who they are. But uh, Ray Samson, my network is not bad though. Maybe, I don't know, maybe your network over there. I have a good network here. My network is not bad. If it's bad, I would just say it's bad. It's not bad. My network is really strong. Seriously, think is okay. That is not true. I seriously think that is not true. Are you not saying that if me as a Benin man go to Yoruba land where they are breaking cola, not because I'm a Benin man, the Yoruba will not say as a Benin man should break cola, not before them. That is not true. That can't be true. While we are projecting our history, we should project our history. <clears throat> in the truest of sense there might have been some ethnic groups that allows the Benin to break the covenant because they are ancestrally Benin not those who are not ancestrally Benin for example, are you not saying that a Benin man will go in the midst of Igbo man <laughs> and Igbo people are like Igbo uh, people so, uh, it just doesn't make sense we do also allow an Igbo person break all not in our own land. So <clears throat> it's about mutual respect. I, I understand of our greatness and all that, but we must also put it in the right perspective. We must not use it to to feel to to feel that other ethnic nationalities are not important. Other ethnic nationalities does not have their own pride. Other ethnic uh, nationalities does not have their own culture and custom. I know that Igbo, when you're calling ethnic nationalities that has culture, Igbo does not have. So that's why they are always fond of disrespecting their elders. In short, they don't even have, they don't consider elders in their land. Everybody is just like an elder over there. Let me, let me block this Jim Smith. Seems like the guy doesn't have sense. Okay, so oh, okay, okay. Hmm. Okay. Then in that case, you are right. If it's within the context of a dose state, you are right. But I don't think. I think that's more of like a respect. It's not. It's not compose. It's not. It's not. Um, it's more of like a respect. We shouldn't look beyond it as a respect, as a matter of fact. For example, all ones are sexually been. If I go to all one land and they decide to break all or not and not call me to come and break all, I shouldn't raise an eyebrow. If they call me to come and touch the call or not or break the call or not, <laughs> that's good. It's a respect, but we shouldn't look at it beyond that. That's what I'm saying. If our Benin descendant has come as to show us that respect it's also respect is reciprocal like like it has been said so it's also important that we also show them that respect by understanding that it was not mandatory if they decide not to give me that call and not to break heaven will not fall all right but they might have stampeded
yes that anabra community could have been ancestrally related connected to the benin people it is like i've said mr zogia it is a respect it does not go beyond that on our way to our way every queen will be no we know we're doing that ever we're talking and nothing a boy didn't you i don't know whether you understand so but when some very misguided benin people now start to think that because other and benin ancestor uh, descendants shows us that respect of making us to know that that's where they came from will not amount for we regarded them or seeing them as subservient or less human or slaves i think that's it's a foundational issues that that has blighted or sort of the relationship between the Benins and Asans. And like I said, I'm not I'm not supporting any side. If you ask me in this matter, I have said that I'm, I'm not taking any side. I'm not taking the side of Asan. I'm not taking the side of Benin. I'm just saying if if there is an ancestral law that says that that's how it should be, alright? It should be, then if an Asaman feels that why should it be? Yes, it's free. It's his opinion about things. It is not it is not a law that was enacted that it is a must. Alright? And that shows that that Asian person has disrespected the respect that his ancestors had for the ancestral home. So is it who we think? One shouldn't look like the respect that one is showing to the other makes the other one subservient or inferior to the other and the one shouldn't not feel that the you know rota or the law is sort of the the, the sort of a respect that the, their ancestors have been uh, giving the benin as a way of a solidarity to show of their ancestral connection to these people must be broken because of civilization so these things must be balanced. This is about the only thing I want to talk about. I don't want to talk about uh, whether Essence came from uh, Uhe, when they were coming from the Great Trek and all that, according to the works of OSB or Morrigay. I don't want to talk about uh, uh, works of uh, Jacob Wade Araiwa, that Essan, Arima Nissan Fua, blah, 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 blah. I'm just saying, I'm just saying that that if the Asians have been showing the Benin people respect for this long, that has to, that is an accessory respect that we should not think it's, it's a right. Uh, we should not think uh, it makes them inferior to us. That's, that's about my point in this whole matter. Which chief broke for or not? I was in Ile Ife. I was in Ile Ife. I don't think that that kind of a thing. Yes, the Ife people prayed, so the Ife people broke or not. The Benin people. It was even um, Chief uh, Ekato, uh, do you for Chief Ekato and the what's the title of the chief that broke the cal or not in Ife. So I was there, so nobody can tell me anything that happened. The Ife people broke all and the Benin people broke all The Ife people prayed for Ife and prayed for Benin. Benin people prayed for Ife and prayed for Benin. So that's what happened that day. I was there, except Oga and Omona Joe recently now, about two years ago or so. Don't worry, no, it's, it's okay. All right. Ouch.
Mm. You will not understand. I'm more you, Gabriel. You will not understand. This one is the call no level. See, before I started discussing this level, I made a very important, a very important analysis. What is meant by blue blood? God created the blue blood. <laughs> Yes, there's actually a blue blood. Are you aware that the snail has a blue blood? Anyway, blue blood is like a special blood. It's a rare blood. There's actually a blue blood. It's a rare blood. What blue blood means in the scientific world is like something that is rare. So, um, in a societal idealism, it's royalty. A blue blood signifies royalty. When you say some people are blue blood and when you say some other persons are not blue blood you're just trying to say that ah, this one is royalty because in real sense it's actually blue blood you can actually get blue blood in snail but it's actually rare so uh, it, <laughs> blue blood is a rare kind of a blood so that means like royalties are quite rare and in ethnic groups that understand what royalty is so you just said okay i'm from i'm a blue blood that makes that in other words i'm a royalty so like I was saying, uh, Mario Gabriel, it's really very important because these were some of the fundamental issues that the Yoruba people address. That that's why you now have Yoruba people today. I mean, it's different people coming together to form one ethnic group. Now you're not having the same ancestrally related people unable to come together and forge um, and forge and forge and be united. Now, one of the most important instruments of unity is language. So the question is, if a great Benin country is to evolve, is to happen, which would be the official language? Are you going to tell the Asians to weasel away their language and adopt the Ado language. Are you going to tell the robots to weasel away the Oruba language and adopt the Ado language? So that is. The greatest instrument of unity is language, definitely. So, but I am telling you the issue. While it is very foundational, fundamental for we to talk about unity. Because once we don't begin to see ourselves as one, when it comes to an instrument of unity, which is language, who is going to shed Israel language for the other? That, that that is a foundational issue that is a foundational issue the essence believe that the language that was spoken in the old Benin like during the days of the Ogiso is what they have maintained that the language that the Edo people now speak has been so corrupted because of the influences of every other ethnic nationalities that came and become part of us. That the undiluted language that was spoken 800 years ago, 1,000 years ago, 1,500 years ago, is the Asian language. Because at the time they left Benin, their language was not corrupted. So it was a language that was moved from Benin, that they retained in the present day Asian land, that was the original language that was spoken in Benin. I don't know whether you understand. So we are looking at dilemmas. We are looking at issues. So that we are looking at arguments. We are looking at presentations. Is it true? Is it true that the original language that was spoken in a Dolan was being retained by the Asian? 
there's an argument um, I, I unveiled a fact recently about uh, Yoruba Ife that the original kings of Ife were called Ogene not Oni Oba Abini is regarded one of the numerous names of Oba so, and the oldest tradition of the Ife people is called the Ikedu tradition and the Ikedu tradition simply states that the, the earliest rulers of Ife were regarded as Ogene. Now, it's Ogene and a do word or an Urubo word of a truth. Ogene is an Edo word, but not being used frequently. For some of us who are not too conversant with the Benin history, I like to say this. The Igwe during the time of Obaiwai, the first, is different from the Igwe, from the reign of Obaisige. In the days of Ewai the first, in Edowa Atie Agwe Ogogene. So, at one point in time, Obaisige replaced so many, replaced Ogene Obaisige now, a lot of 99% uh, of the Benins are not aware of this fact that I want to unleash. Obaisige actually replaced the word Ogene with Osa. So it is from the era of Osa that of Obaisige that the word Osa became very prominent in the Benin language. Or a do language, how you want to put it. But before they introduced the original word Nedoti or Saloboa was actually Ogene. Which the robo has retained. So that means there might be truth that the original language that was spoken during the days of the Ogishos or in the earliest times, some of the earliest migrants, the people who left quite a long time ago, retained quite some of those old ancient dictions which could have been corrupted in Benin. So, I am presenting the argument that are going with facts, visible facts. We no longer use the word organ, but organ is actually an Edo word. Alright? Not necessarily it means God in Edo. It's deeper than God. Organ is in a do means someone in place of authority, someone that is above every other person, someone in a, a position like the Obar of Benin. So, Ogene means someone in a place of authority that is over every other person, every other person around. Edo, the old Edo language, the old language of the Edo people, Ati Ogene, not necessarily only God. So place so that means organe in one point in history could have one point in history replaced the word oba. I, I've just explained it. Right. So but one way or the other it's not true, it's not speak different too. I'm I'm not Omori Gabriel, I'm not arguing that. I'm not, I'm not arguing that. Yes, very good example. I will uh, There was there was an Oba that was called. As at now, I am I am still I'm still looking for. An idioma that would really tell me, which of these two words are correct. There was an Oba that was called. Oriogene. Or Oyogene, two different Benin words, spelled as the same. Ohe Ogene, Oyogene means like Ogene's abode, place of residence. Hmm? Or Oriogene, someone who chose Ogene as a title. 
two words i still don't know which is the actual one we have an upper called about oriogene it's o r o e o g h e n e oriogene oriogene so that's what i'm saying no 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 i think that's not how you spell it too. <laughs> Organosa, yes. It, uh, it is now it is not qualifying the organ eh, and equating it to God. Like I've told you, the original in a doing organ, eh, it's someone in place of authority. Organosa. Uh -huh. That's how you spell it, so, Sakolo, Oriogene. There's an upper called Oriogene. Is it Oriogene or Oriogene? It could be either of any of this. But the point I'm saying that this organe is no longer a word frequently used within the Edo cycle, but is frequently retained in the Urobo cycle. Who also traces the ancestry to Benin. Now that's because some of these original words. Um, okay, I'm going to give you a very. I'm going to give you a very a hand in order for me to prove what I'm saying. There's a book here. I think I still have it here. God helping me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. For those of you, you need to get this book. The title of the book is The Common Greetings of the Benin People. The Common Greetings of the Benin People, written by Hagosa Aysen. He said something when I... Quite a short book. I think everybody should have a copy. Um, mm, now, I want to read from here. Now... In the palace of the Obar of Benin, in the palace of the Obar of Benin, um, there's a word in Uwegwai, in the palace, who can tell me what um, the palace called blood? It, who can... What, but I blood who wear guy in the palace, in the palace of the Oba of Benin. What is, what is the word we do who wear guy now? We mean a tear, blood. Definitely I'm not saying a Saigian. Because a Saigian is not a Benin word. It's a Portuguese word for blood. But inside the palace, they don't call blood a Saigian. Now, the same word used inside the palace as blood is the same word the Asian people call blood. I, I don't know whether you, you people are understanding um, the what I'm trying to raise, raise out here. What I'm trying to raise out here that the debacle. These are one of the issues that must be foundationally. We must have a unifying language. But how are we, the Benins, going to convince the Asians that it has to be their dual language? Yes. It's again, Jerry Binewaka, eh. A do tear a blood who wear guy. If you meet an old a do man, if you meet a very a a man gilles that do not there, may I take blood is again? In the anti blood is a ryan, a ryan, I don't know how you guys pronounce it, but I'll just spell the. A do word for blood is E R O H A E N. I spell it again. Anybody can 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 spell it out. It's E R O H A E N. 
that is edo tie blood edo en bloody the word esagien is not an edo word for blood is a portuguese word for blood that the Beninese copied and that became part of our diction you know I don't know whether you understand. So these are some of the foundational issues that must be addressed. Yes, the last. Uh huh. Spelt well by. Spelt well by Edwin, a uh, uh, greatest greatest prince blue. You got the spelling well. So, so that's the Edutia uh, blood. These are foundational. That's what that's what it's called blood. So these are foundational issues. That's a do word for blood. So, however, because of the influxes of the Portuguese into Benin, it sort of affected some recent Benin speakers, the old Benin speakers, I mean, yes, do not do. Iran, Iran also, bloody, not a sagin. So these are some of the foundational issues. But I have been asked to present these, I've been asked, when issues like this arises, uh -huh, sagin, so in Portuguese it's called a sagin. So, so um the yeah, iran you didn't spell it well Igbo Koshun. that's how you spell it. the spelling is up so so already it's, it's the same pronunciation but it's just that you didn't spell it well so the the foundation obviously i'm gonna be lying i'm quoting from dr isen hagos work one of the highest authority and so uh so However, someone has asked me, in this issue of this language debacle, why do you think that the Edo language should be adopted over every other languages of Benin ancestors? One point that I raised. In the days of the Great Britain, Great Britain, we had Welsh, we had Irish. These languages were not English language. We had the Welsh, we had Irish. These languages were different from the English language. But because the language of the Queen, the language of the Queen, the Overlord, have to be the language of the country that is formed. So the argument is not whether whose language is actually the true language. No, 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 no. It has to be which of these language is being spoken by the Obar of Benin. Who is the overlord of everybody? Who is the king that everybody respects? So the language of the Oba must be the official language of the great Benin people. That's how I solved the puzzle. And I wasn't interested in arguing which of the languages is actually the language that was spoken in, in Igodomigodo 1,000 years ago or Ubinin. 600 years ago or 1500 years ago so because it's not really important anymore it's not really important the most important factor that holds like the 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 courts like the nucleus you know uh, for those of us who are science they say that the most fundamental organelles within the cell is called the nucleus isn't it The most fundamental organelles, the most fundamental, um, the most fundamental um, 
uh, organelles within a cell is called the nucleus. The nucleus, without the nucleus, uh, there's no existence of a cell because that's where mitosis or meiosis, that's where the cell division starts from or comes from. So the orbit of Benin is the nucleus of all Edo people. So his language becomes the language of everybody. So that's how you solve, that's how I solved the puzzle of language. I, in my statement, I have not said that which is original, which is fake. I have not said anything like that. I have, I, I'm not, I'm not interested which is, uh, which is, uh, which is, um, which is original, which, <coughs> which is original, which is fake, which is, uh, you know. All right, but what I have said, and which is the correct thing to say, is that you build an identity from the very soul of that identity, and the very soul of our collective identity is the Obara Benin, and his language, what he speaks, has to be the language of his country or of his people. Me, I'm not, I, I'm the. I don't know how to speak French. I don't know. Yes, I also know that. It's a Latinized word, Sagwen. It's also being spoken by a lot of Latinos uses. Uh, I think when you go to some of their hospitals, it's just like Sagwen Clinic or Sagwen Department or something, 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 something like that. That means a blood bank. I think in blood bank, they just say Sagwen. But what I am trying to explain, things really do not matter. What matters most? No, 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 no. It could have been. Let me let me answer you, uh, Oteme, Jerry. Ote, what? What? How I answer that question, Jerry Bineweka, is, I try not to. I try not to. When it comes to language issue, I try not to feel that this one is more superior than the other in terms of language. It doesn't concern us. All right. I cannot tell you that I do people who own Zokoro. I cannot tell you that the Igbo people own Zokoro. But what I can tell you is that Okoro is an Edo word that has its own Edo meaning. In Igbo land, it's also an Igbo word that has its own Igbo meaning. I think Igbo, in Igbo, Okoro means someone who is strong or so. But in Benin, Okoro is prince. I think it became prince because the first name that um, Eweka the first in the Naya was Okoro. So I don't know how he prince. You know, it, it, I think the first person to bear that name would have been Obai Eweka the first. So because of the position he, he was before bearing that name, Benin said Okoro means prince. I'll give you another example. When I do ya any Ewedo, Ewedo does not have any meaning. In Benin, at the time, um, what was his name? Oh, uh, Prince Efabo was his name. Prince Efabo. By the time Prince Efabo was to ascend the throne, he chose a name. You know how it is. These names now by area Nyankete is highly spiritual. So as he threw the last marble, he he altered. Uh, 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 he altered the first word you utter becomes a name you'll be addressed as. So the first word he uttered was Ewedo. Ewedo had no meaning in Benin. So, but when that when he became the Oba, he introduced the prison system. He was the one who introduced the prison system into Benin. How do Benin even call prison? So, so, so. Prison, how do we need call prison? Prison is a weather. So, 
So, Ewedo, when he chose that name, when Prince Efabo chose that name, he had no meaning. So, but when Otogiri Orue, when he joined his ancestors, Edo now decided to call, now say prison means Ewedo, because one of the most unique things invented, created by that Oba was a prison. So, Edo now, prison means Ewedo. A uh, prison where do a window at here. I just told you how it came about now. So, presumably, that's how Koro came about. So, I wouldn't say that because we had a relationship with Igbo. So, Igbo bears Okoro, Bini bears Okoro. I don't know who owns it. It doesn't even matter who owns it. They have used, I've several times, I've always said there's what we call ideological coincidence. When for some of us who believe in the existence of God, which uh, the Benin's call Osanu Daze Osanu Wodua, or Ogene, you know, um, for those who believe in the existence of God. Now, um, God gave his people different, almost the same idea at different time or the same time. So, uh, in the world of science, there's a general notion that uh, we use that when you're thinking of any invention now th there's no there's nothing like um, a novel invention like every single thing that you are thinking that you want to invent now someone somewhere at one point in one time would have thought about it you know would have thought about it maybe the only difference between you and him is that you are the one who practicalized it, who wants to make it a reality, who makes those ideas a reality. So God could have given the same name to the Igbos just like he gave the same name to the Benins. Ideological coincidence. I think that's the word we use for that. Are we okay? Are we good? Okay. Now, I said I was going to address two very foundational issues. I think uh, I've talked about one. Peripherally, I've talked about a respect between the Benins and the Yesans. It's most important. We should look critical into it. It is important then. The second thing I'd like to talk about is territorial um, territorial integrity. What is the territories of the Benin people? Because today, we must continue to remind our people. Because the gullibility that flows through the minds of our people is astonishing. So we must now remind our people the importance, the importance of... Um, Knowing men a dope polo say veganade, you know, Sorry, I don't know. It's like the network is not. Um... Is... Sorry, anybody online? How's the network? Uh... I mean, network is so poor. I think the network is so poor. If the network is okay, just say hi.
Okay. The, net, the network is okay. All right. Okay. I thought the network was bad because. Um, So let's talk about territory, the territory of the Benin people. It's it's very vital, it's very Okay, alright. Okay. Okay, okay. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. In Italy, the northern uh, people still retain their language to avoid Sicily. Sicily. I don't know of that. I don't know of that, Mr. Agbe Okoson. So, you mean Sicily um, is different from Italian? Like the language, like Sicily is different from Italian. Anyway. Uh, in order for me not to deviate, I was talking about, I was going to talk about the territories of the Benin people so that we can, we, we have maps. Um, Amote Akun came and a whole lot of persons are excited about that project. I'm equally very excited about it. It's, it's amazing, it's good. But um, they included Akoko Edo as part of um they say one local government in Edo state, which they called Akoko Edo. It shows the stupidity of some of those Yoruba people that wrote such. Very stupid. Very, very stupid of them to have added Akoko Edo as part of the territories. Before now, before now, they used to add <laughs> the entire Edo state. Three years ago, they were used to adding a do state, but we have given them an unbearable nightmare. Unbearable. It's like it's like it's unbearable. Like that they now resolved that we are too hot for them. So, but now they want to follow back door to take a cocoa Edo from a do. We are telling them that. We want to remind them very, very soon that the entire Ondo state is not theirs. We have to re remind them that some part of Ekiti are not theirs. We have to also remind them very, very soon that Eko is not theirs. So while all these people ignorantly or stupidly Continue to make a broad daylight, continue to portray a broad daylight ignorance. One will wonder why will people who knows that the territory of people should know what was the territory, what was the boundary? If you understand Nigeria map, let me first let me let me educate some of our do people. First and foremost, what was if you understand Nigeria map, what is the boundary or what was the boundary? between the old Benin Empire and the old Oyo Empire, where was the boundary? There was a boundary. Now, I'm going to tell you where the boundary was. The boundary was at Ekiti. The boundary between old Benin Empire and old Oyo Empire is at a place, present day Ekiti State, a place called Otun. Otun. Otun is spelled as O T U N. The boundary between the old Benin Empire and the old Oyo Empire was at a place called Otun. And Otun. Is at the present day Ekiti State, very, very close to Kwara State. Now, the implication of what that means, if you understand Nigeria map, is that from the northern part of Ekiti, the present day Ekiti North, which is almost having a boundary with Kwara down southwards 
was controlled by Benin Empire. So that means there were conflagrations of part of present-day Ogun state, part of 100% that we are talking about almost 90% of present-day Ekiti state, part of Abiy Okuta Ogun state, and the entire Ondo state was Benin Empire. While westward was on your empire. So our people must be educated. So how then will the Yoruba now jump over these territories and now come and claim Akoko Edo? We must ask them questions. Our people must know the truth. If they come out and say, if the Yorubas come out and say that Benin's do not was not having so much influence over them, then I put it to you that as the, the transatlantic ocean or the ocean line that passes through the the the, the so-called present-day Yoruba land, why is it called Bite of Benin? These are fun. These are questions our people should be asking themselves. The river that passed through Yoruba land or the ocean, however, or the sea that passed through the Europe, the stretch of Yoruba land, is called Bite of Benin and not Bite of Yoruba. These are questions that Benin should start asking themselves. Oh, you think my word is what? We might do lay lay man in Mate said, we might go anyhow. So the point is, we must tell ourselves the truth. So we really need Tyson. Then I was in talk with uh, one of my brother, um, um, Onya Effion, Essien, yeah, Essien. His, his great grandfather is the owner of the ancient town in Cross River, Calabar. So, um, the household that Obaborame stayed in was his great grandfather. We spoke for more than four, almost three hours. Yeah, not up to four. Almost three hours. Two days ago. On the on the on the uh, relationship between the ethnic people and the Benin people. So uh, there, he's working on re releasing a masterpiece. I think um, um, Obayawai the second, according to what he told me, because I didn't, I didn't go for, I didn't, I didn't go for that trip, for that historical trip to Calabar, was that um, Obayawai actually gave invitation to this ASEAN family to come for the his birthday, October twenty this year. So they are, they are, they are, they are rushing to finish that work on the relationship between the, the the ethnic people and the Benin people so that they can present that historical masterpiece to the Obara Benin uh, during his uh, birthday, October 20th this year. So he's working on that and by God's grace, I'm giving, I'm going to refurbish him with a whole lot of um, uh, works, Benin works, so that he can have a very robust book uh, when it comes out. Well, I'm just praying that he's able to finish uh, uh, is able to is able to finish uh, is able to finish that work before October twenty. Mm. So um, ah, if Ike, sorry oh, for not coming on time. We have a lot of um, for example, Jerry Mineweka. We have a lot of it. Uh, I just told you that the boundary between Old Oyo Empire and Old Benin Empire was at Otum. Now, don't forget, there was an Iyase. Have you forgotten this popular street called Okorotum? 
Okorotun Street in Jiaroi. It was the name of an Iyase. It was, it was he, his father's. His father had fought in the Bini Ekiti Wars. So, when we won those places, those places in Ekiti, a lot of Benin people settled and established, not just settled, we also established some communities within Ekiti. So most of them stayed back. Stayed back. Had wives, maybe Yoruba wives and all that, and raised families over there. It was after the restoration of the monarchy, after 17 years of interregnum, uh, Oba Kenzwa II invited one of the Benin, though he was born and bred up in Otum, Ekiti State. So the... The Benin's remember that he barely could speak Benin. He barely could speak Benin. So uh, his name was Iyase Okorotun. Mm. It was also a very tough Iyase. It was, a, uh, it was also a very troublemaker. You know, Iyase's are usually troublemaker, except uh, this present Iyase, who is not a troublemaker. But most Iyase, if not 99% or 98% of the Iyase's are troublemaker. The present Iyase is the 17th. He says of Benin. Yeah, I think I, I, I wrote I wrote um I wrote um, a quite substantial work on the Yasses of Benin. Their names, the uh, the year, uh, the era they reigned and all that. The era that they served, the reigning over and all that. I did I did an incredible work. I think it's it's somewhere in the internet. I did that quite a long time ago. Maybe like um six or uh, Yasser's birthday was September. Was it September? Yasser's birthday was September now. Okay. So I did it about a week before Yasser's birthday. It was like a father, Chief Shamimbe. So I did it. So, so that, that work would have been August, yes. So I think on my page, you, you can see that work by August. So that's it. So there are communities, nucleus of communities. Daniel, so let me finish reading your your thesis. It's quite long. About ourselves, so the Benin. I'm very sorry to use this word. We Benin don't help ourselves. We are just fighting for money, killing ourselves for nothing. Please stop. So come together, please. While Obedi Hama had a guardian, he will be then. Ah uh, yes, yes, obviously not. Now that's another prominent family. Ihama. I'm not talking about Bede Ihama. I'm talking about the Ihama family. The Uhobi. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, uh, my brother, the truth is um, we're doing all that we can in doing sensitization of our people, in trying to enlighten our people that uh, we should not be self centered. We should see ourselves as most very important. And most importantly, we should not be cajoled into believing that some of these Oduduwa Republic, that the Edo House will be part of Odudu. Come on. Edo person supporting to be part of Oduduwa Republic? That is foolishness in the highest proportion. Edo people projecting to be part of Biafra? That is foolishness. Of the highest proportion. Why? Why? Why should you? Why should we? They, are, they, they are my. If we have not gotten it right, only me. Yeah, my dear If we have, if we have not go, if we have not started advocating for our own country, does that mean that we, we don't have sense at all? And my brother, I, I have addressed this issue of we beings calling ourselves very wicked. The love starts from us as individual. All right, I'm sure about two years ago, a whole lot of persons who were unwilling to, I get calls every day of Benins who have thanked me a whole lot and said that because of my constant 
education and enlightenment and telling them of the past heroism uh, of our ancestors um, that they have had a, a rebranded mind about who we truly are so um, my brother Daniel Dixon and when I return with my brother my also Dixon my brother Dixon it's also your job to educate the minds of our people so as uh, for them to have a rethink of, of not being of being who that they are now um, it's quite pathetic though that when we hear news of how some Benin people sees other Benin people as bush savages and all that um, when you meet any Benin people who think less of you who think that all that is Benin is not good do not fight do not quarrel just tell yourself am I say or lower ignorance on your boot here ignorance it's just ignorant if it's if it's if it's if it's in accordance in understanding um, the Benin if you understand the true blood as a Benin person you will not see another Benin person as not important as not important uh, Miss Ayama we are not dragging your royal blood with you <laughs> but the, the most important thing I say this all the time it's not important whether you are royalty or you are not royalty it is not important it does not most of the great people that fought for Benin lands were not royal they were not royalty what makes you a Benin man is protecting the very interest of a Benin of your land that is that makes you a Benin man. That's the first thing we all should be proud of before we start saying whether this one is a royalty, this one is not a royalty, this one is an established family, this is not a family. Uh, first thing first is that we are Benins. Before, I'm not trying to say, I'm, I'm also one way or the other connected to the royal families and other, but that to me is not important. What is most important is what I just said. Seeing yourself as a Benin man who is ready to do all he can for the restoration of the Benin people. Well, it's 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 the work we are doing is quite. It's not as easy as you think it is. I'm a go where you ma. I'm not my high. I'm a go where they do tire. I'm a go where you ma. I'm not my high. So sometimes when people call me and say that we need to do this, we need to do that, we need to do this, we need to do that. Um, uh, I would just tell them that it is not as easy as you people are saying it. Because if it was easy for the past three years that some of us have been trying to fight for the restoration of the greatness of Benin Kingdom, it would have been a lot done. When you now enter do not see that your expectations will be crippled if not because of some of us have told ourselves that we are not backing out we're going to fight this cause to the very latter with or without support if we were expecting support for the past three years uh if i don't resign now if i don't resign for the struggle but because in in our back of our mind we knew that it is not about support we are not doing it for ourselves we're not doing it for just even now we're doing it for the future generations and we must be very uncomfortable we must ready we must be very ready to make those sacrifices so that we can be able to effect the necessary change that the world expects us to effect so um it is important at this very juncture i won't be i'm probably been in fact i won't be able to, Envance and Perio, I won't be able to. Idia, Eden stories are everywhere. They're like everywhere. Just Google it, Queen Idia. <laughs> I'm sure you see a whole lot of stories about them. And Eden, you see a whole lot of stories about them. Uh, I will not be, even if, even if I want to do that, but it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be today anymore. 
Mm, definitely. Every good time, Mr. M. Vance and Porio. Every Benin should love ourselves. Please, we are not by our friends. We are Benin, and Benin is a blessed land. Obviously, Benin, uh, Benin is a blessed land. Benin is the land of heroes and great men. So, we should always be very proud. We sample, we sample our beats wherever we go, because um, we sample our names. Uh, we sample our names, we sample our beats, we sample everything that makes us Benin. We sample it every day. We. Mabe yabe doni mazeo. Eh. 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 No maoni a zedo. Um uh -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. um if we do a moon, I feel pained about it. Uh, so if we yeah to an extent. So if we yeah to an extent. So like Inogi Collins have said, um whenever I come online, I usually don't give time for coming online. I just come if I'm led by God and our ancestors. And a whole lot of persons have reached out to me whether I'm a Christian or not a Christian. So I, I try to tell them that it is not important. I don't, I, I've always, I'm an advocate of the word we have been in first before any other thing. So whether you're a Christian or you're a traditionalist, it's not as important as you being been in. You became a Benin man first before there was a choice for you to choose between your tra the tradition of your people and the tradition of the white people or whatever people want to call it that. Christianity is not a, whatever. I don't want to delve into it. So I tell people that it's not important for people to know whether I'm a Christian or not. I think with the way I pray, people should know that I'm more inclined into the tradition because I pray with the uh, by the power of God and our ancestors. That's how. I make my prayers, but it doesn't really matter. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't have, I don't have uh, any wrong impression about Christianity. That we, um, when people come and, and want to cause Christianity, uh, I, I just tell them that uh, you are causing Christianity with uh, the civilization of Christianity themselves. See, in the old Benin, in the old Benin. All right, some old Benin accepted Christianity and the old Benin benefited from. There was a video I did on Uruguay being a Christian convert and all that. SG being a Christian convert, Uruguay being um, someone which I think I know him. I know him commented on the YouTube on one neighbor TV YouTube channel. I read it yesterday. I felt pained a bit. But my consolation was that he's ignorant of the truth. Um, what he said was that I wasn't making any sense. That I was more, I was more like uh, 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 how do we put? And he said it's more of like indoctrination than uh, history. That is, he was saying that me trying to clap for the white people means that in my i'm not i don't know myself but in practice i practice our tradition better than these people the only thing that these are this of most of our people are very good at is to criticize everything so but when you've been here for three four years you should grow a thick skin to some uh wow Wow, so Daddy was a professor before he died though. Daddy was a professor before he died. It's that one of Daddy's son is one of my very good friends is in Manchester, as in no. I think uh uh Bros Ridge is in London. Is that in London Manchester? We are very close friends. Well I'm I'm talking about uh, one of the sons of the legendary professor Osborne. 
<clears throat> Omori again. It was always at loggerhead with Obaridia in terms of history. <laughs> because he was he was in a class of his own. I have I have three of my mentors, present mentors that are that are disciples of OSB Omorige. If you want to read Benin book, go and read Great Benin, Volume 1 to 5. It's an amazing work. So I've read quite a lot of a part that is work, Professor OSB Omorige. And these are the people. These are the people that we look up to. These are the people that we 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 read their works. These are the people that we we are so motivated by their dedication to the history of our land. And uh, I remember three years ago when I was privileged to meet with then he was an associate professor Uyula Waswanele. Is that a professor? A professor of history. Uh, I told him. I remember I, I, I recorded something from him when he was trying to tell me about the Benin Ife controversy. I was just a young lad coming up. I, I told him that your job, sir, is to write these books. That's what I told the pa. Now, your job is to write these books, just like their Jacob over there, the OSB, their A. Yare, the likes of their Onaiwu, the likes of. Uh, was oh, this was my friend oh uh ah i have forgotten his name oh ah uh doctor ah excellent dn dn doctor dn or the likes of your doctor dn or these great amazing benin historians uh okay on recent times you now have the likes of uh semi gear you have the likes of um uh my my daddy doctor hagos i you have the likes of uh, uh, this bright, young, intelligent um, historian. Uh, I've read a whole lot of his works. I've forgotten. I've forgotten. Okay, a whole lot of this person. My, 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 my what I told Doctor Uyila was at that time was that your job was to write, and our job was to read and spread. He's a bloody ah god. FFK. Is it not FFK? Edwin Ehimatie or more giver. Ah shit, shit. Why is this guy? <laughs> <laughs> FFK is a bloody we know that he's a bloody liar that he's sick, or make man or sick. Why not remind him of the Benin Equity Wars? Who won? Remind him of the Benin Ekiti Wars. Uh, Ekiti, I know. Are they not classified as an ago? Rem remind him of the Benin Akure War. Remind him of the Benin Ondo War. Remind him of the Benin Ijebu War. In short, Ijebu people recorded it that <laughs> there is a parable in Ekiti. Uh, uh, he said the parable. I don't know. You know, I'm not. I don't speak Yoruba. The parable translated in English is that just like Ogbomodu, that is like God of Thunder. So that's what Ekiti called God of Thunder, wages war on in heaven. That's how the Benin people wages war on earth. So if people like their Femi, Fanny Kayo, they come down to, to say nonsense, you remind him of this Benin Ijebu war. Then you give him references. If you want references, I'll give you references of how we made mints of all of them. Remind him of the Benin Ekiti war where we conquered almost the entire present day Akiti State. Remind him of the Benin Ondo War. Remind him of the Benin Akure War, ETC. So, we defeated Anago as much as we can remember. We were just beating them like. <laughs> Even in the 1950s, I think I've said this, the Ekiti people 
even after we lost our sovereignty, we have documents for that. Even in the 50s, the Ekiti people were still paying tribute to the Oba of Benin. Even in the 50s, I'm saying 50s, I'm not saying, I'm saying 1950s, they were still paying tribute to the Oba of Benin. It's for this. So, my brother, let uh, have big the uh, lying historian like the FFK not lie to you. Someday we'll have to publicly school him. When he wants to talk, if he wants to make his historical bravado, you should limit it to the Fulani headsmen or to the Fulani and the Hausa people. But when he wants to make bravado and he wants to use it to obtain truth against the Benin, then we must remind him how we made immense of them severally. A mess of them severally. The only reason that the Benin did not defeat Oyo, not because Oyo was powerful. Few years later, after we allowed them be, the Ibadan people made a mess of Oyo Empire, the mighty Oyo Empire. Ibadan people, Oyo, Oyo people, Amins were defeated more than two times by other settlements of the present day Anago, Yoruba, whatever they call themselves, Komomo Odua. So that means oh, your empire wasn't as big, it wasn't as strong. Even Are or Nakakafo Afonja, one of the head of the military of the Oyo Empire, rebelled and defeated the Oyo Empire themselves in the creation of a what led them um, between the war of the, the Oyo and the Afonja, what led to a Lauren. Now let's not go there. So that means it's not as if for your empire or your people army were that strong. The Beninese did not defeat them because we know that the founders or the kings of the or your people or the or your empire are younger brother or is they are laughing of your is the younger brother of the Oba of Benin. So you you do not defeat your younger brother. If if Oyo was not Oba Benin's younger brother, the ruler of Oyo was not Oba Benin, would have just run the entire Yoruba land. That was a saving grace because the Benin's know that the ruler of Oyo, even Ayahi, there was even time that the Oyo people had some. Um, a dispute with some of these northerners and Benin, uh, Benin went to save their houses. Awa we live in a bit debaya agbenoko. Inya ye ye yare. Uh huh. So that's what I'm saying. Uh, Eve, uh, Eve Ike, that you should say that the Afonja or the the Fulani people never defeated them, but it should end there. <laughs> That if it's not saying that no Nigerian never defeated them, they will not ask them, is it that Benin's Edo people are no Nigerians? If Edo people are still within the confine of Nigeria, that means you should know that they were defeated more than what books can even read. If, 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 if they were to pay 5,000 calories to the Oba Benin, for example, every year, and they pay 4,500. That means their hearts will be whooped again to tell them that, okay, come and present your, your best gifts, your best farm produce, and all that. Come and present it to our mom. Mm. So these are not bravado, these are facts. So I'm only saying this because someone said that FFK, but however, I think someone clarified that, that he was not referring to Benin. Since he wasn't referring to Benin, we we'll allow that matter die here. But in truth, I want to make a mess of all these people. So ladies and gentlemen, I came online today to tell you that um, it is most expedient for us to know that we cannot be subservient to people that was once subservient to us by whatever arrangement.
We can't be Biafra. That's an ideology that is less than a hundred years. What about the sovereignty? We haven't been in existing for, 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 for more than 3,000 years. So you want to throw all that away and become subservient to it? The people are so arrogant as they are. They want to become part of a Dudua who, in spite of trying to lie to the world that you are from there, still do not see you as part of them. You have to have a rethink. A country must be forged from the present day South South. And we must lead that formation of that country. We must lead it. Mm. Uh -huh. So, you for your right hand, if you were on his page, if he had said it in Twitter, I'm sure a whole lot of person would have just written on there that shut up. Benin people defeated you several times and just keep your mouth shut. If you want to argue, I'll just, I'll just pack tens and hundreds of references in different books where the Benins defeated them. Then, to challenge him, you now say that he should show you one book that it was written that the Yoruba defeated the Benins. That Yama will be the donor award, the Boyan Bomomo, where my may be Nagben, whether Yoruba or any other person, Wagman, Nagben, where one not defeat him. So I say, Bono, so otherwise, allow that you uh, can only rant, but his rant is not, it's, it should not go beyond, uh, like I said, his rant should not go beyond. Uh, I was uh, on the Mark Hyman. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's 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 quite late now. I have to, I have to, I have to thank all of you for coming. I, I just wanted to tell you how important it is for we to start seeing ourselves as the way we are, breath beneath that we are. I will must start consciously doing things that will make us survive trust me we are doing all that we can we we can we are working as much as we can to 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 we are working as much as we can to educate our people so that we can start to rise again as a people we are talking to authorities we are trying to get audience from people who are very very important in the struggle in the future uh, once we get we're doing our underground job once we've done all our underground job uh, i'm sure a whole lot of patients will be more than excited with the plans that we have for our people we are not going to sleep people should not relent we're just saying that we need all the support we need to rally around ourselves so that we can be able to do all that we can so I'm bringing you great there. Uh, I'm bringing you this greeting from <laughs> from Benin. I was saying that Ebo uh, Ede and uh, they are planning. We must also plan, and not just plan. Edo ya ekbita, edo ma yoku de, edo ma muigbe, edo muigbe yoku. On your side, on your side, managa home you talk. You know, so it's most important to get ready. For whatever battle that lies ahead very very much prepared we, we are not sanding the drum of war for now because we are not fully prepared once we are fully prepared i'm sure a whole lot of persons will be more than excited lastly a whole lot of persons ask me that if we are to form a security group what should be the name a lot of persons said atalakba i said no how can we use atalakba i read in a war of one of my brother he suggested a moemoe. And I said, a moemoe is beautiful. A moemoe is a beautiful name. And I'm not going to tell you why it is beautiful because it, 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 is, it encapsulates the present situation. So if you're asking me what, what are we looking for, what, what, what should be the name of what we think of the group of the people that we eventually protect 
the territorial integrity of the Edo people, I would say a moi moi. I would say the moi moi. And so for some of you who do not know what a moi moi means, I'll put your mind in suspension. I'll put your mind in suspension. When next I come online, remind me to explain the misery of a moi moi. And when I'm done explaining it to you, you understand why it is important that uh, the, that uh, everything is just working around for for the upliftment of that name. So I thank you all very much, Sade uh, Bawaya. I thank all of you who has been very attentive, who has been following my program, who has been sharing the whole of these videos and. Uh, Mm. we should learn not to be sharing just negative videos these are positive videos a lot of my videos have touched a lot of lives a lot and a lot of lives i mean it i'm sincere and so um with a wider coverage give a wider coverage more lives when people get to listen to some of these things that we talk about every time every now and then and how we try to use our history iron sharpened iron that's what the bible said says says not said this is not past tense so um uh so we will be able to share this video as much as you can so that it gets to a whole lot of persons and so we can people can always learn from people can always learn the truth facts about our people and our past exploit and our realistic state and what we can do to be better than what we are currently doing now for the future. So I'm sure the next <laughs> live video I'm going to do, I'm so, I'm so going to lambast a lot of our so-called elites. They are one of the problems that we are currently facing. One of the problems we're currently facing. But, but before then, I want to thank all of you. Brother Jolly, Odion Oko, so why are we saying? I mean, do it, do it. Oh, but I'll talk to you. Yes, sir. All right. Cheers. Bye-bye.